Daphne, welcome to the cave. Thank you very much, Elias. Lovely to be here. Lovely yeah, to this, join you guys. This, uh, this interview has been ongoing with our schedules and everything, but we're finally here. Yep, that's right. That's right. It's wonderful. And different cities as well. Different, different time zones. That's right. that's right. Yeah, it's hello uh, from London. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock in, Europe, in right? London. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And four o'clock in Massachusetts. That's right. That's right. So I, uh, yeah, I mean, the listeners of viewers are going to be get excited because you've got a couple projects that you filmed. Some have been released already. I mean, I, I don't even know where to start with you. You know, you've been busy. <laughs> I was doing when I was doing research on you. You've been busy. You know, you've done. I have. I have. A, I have a short role role in a Beckett, which was filmed in Greece, Menore, Smirma. You have a, is it an indie film, uh, First Swim, that's going to get released at the end of the September? So uh, just to, to, to take them chronologically, Beckett was filmed in 2019 in Athens. Yeah. Uh, and because of the pandemic, I think the release was came out later than they anticipated. That's right. um, and then First Swim, the first swim is a short film that we filmed in uh, just outside of Athens on a beach uh, in wow. a little city called Anavisos uh, in September, exactly a year ago. And it's now premiering at uh, the Athens International Film Festival at the end of September. Wow. In, in Greek, it's called Nichtes Premieras, evenings, e premiere evenings. Um, and then over the summer, this summer, uh, early June until early July, I filmed uh, Minore, which was um, an indie feature film, uh, and then uh, finished sort of mid-August was Smyrna, uh, which was a period film uh, about the Asia Minor catastrophe, which I think is coming out in December. And you've been busy traveling all over the place then, between London and Kipros and uh, Greece yeah, well, and LA. Well, I'm, I'm from Cyprus originally. Um, and over the last, I don't know, 10 or so years that I've been uh, an actress, I have mm. traveled a lot. Um, I go back to Cyprus to see my family, but also to, to do some films. And I've done some brilliant films in Cyprus too, in fact, uh, that I'm very, very proud of. Um, I travel back and forth to Greece for work and and for because I love the place, of course, mm. um, and L.A. But, you know, as we all know, the last 18 or so months have been incredibly difficult. Yeah. Um, and especially for creative people like like us, it was difficult to travel. So I was stuck in London um, for the first and second lockdowns or whatever. I, I lose track of how the numbers of lockdowns that we've had. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I was very lucky in that these two films over the summer happened both in Athens, the, the, their dates didn't clash. So I camped out, I left, I, I left around April and I came back to England end of August. So I've been away wow. five months. Wow. I've become That's... an Athenian. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So you mentioned, uh, we'll, we'll talk about those films in a little bit. Uh, you mentioned you've been acting for the last 10 years. Uh, like, what made you get into acting? What made you pursue it? And, and I got to know, because this is the question I, I ask a lot of, like, my, even my Greek friends, or like, even like you said, you're from Kipros, you know, we have similar ethnic background, the way we grew up and everything. Like, of course, how, did of you, course. how did your parents say, okay, yeah, I want, you could go do acting. How do they not say, you say, go be a teacher or a doctor or. Well, mine is an interesting one and you're absolutely right. Uh, they did suggest I go into law and I did go into law. In fact, I, I studied law before I became an actor. Wow. Um, so I was at university doing law thinking, oh my God, this is so not me. Why am I doing this? It was so not, not what I was yeah. you know, right for. Um, and then one summer I was in Cyprus and this group of young actors from a, an English drama school called the Bristol Old Vic Drama School had come to uh, stage a performance, a production of Othello, Shakespeare's Othello. Mm. And for some reason, uh, uh, an actress had, had uh, dropped out um, and a friend of mine who knew I was dying to try it uh, told me about it and she said why don't you go and audition for them and I and I did and I got the part of Amelia which is a, a great part in in Othello mm. and suddenly I found myself on the first day of the rehearse of rehearsals thinking what the hell is going on what am I doing this is the <laughs> craziest thing I've ever done in my life I can't I'm not sure I can I can pull this off I don't maybe I should leave and never 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 go ne yeah. you know don't turn up to the second day of rehearsals and 
you know, my friend at the time was like, you go and you do it. You have to go and finish it now. And I'm so glad I did because at the end of the production, I knew that this was it. Somehow my, my, my heart opened. I was absolutely sure that that was what I was um, meant to be doing. I fell in love with it. So I, that's, how my, that's how my journey started. Yeah. And I do well, so, have a law degree, which I am not that's great. going to be not going to be yeah. using at any point because I don't remember a thing. So yeah. what does your family think about this whole like the way things went? Well, you know what? They um, they uh, I, I went to drama school and I think they thought at first that like I'd go to drama school and then I'd return. Mm. Um, so they didn't think much of it. But then after drama school, within three months of graduating, I, sat, I got onto this uh, English TV series. It's, a, it's the equivalent of ER. It's like a, a medical series here okay. called Casualty. So suddenly, I was very fortunate, literally overnight after my graduation, I was playing a nurse on this BBC series called Casualty. Mm -hmm. So suddenly my parents were like, they hadn't had time to get used to the idea that I was an actress let alone, you know, suddenly I was actually an employed, a working actress. Wow. So suddenly they were very, very proud and surprised, but delighted. So, and I have to say, they've been very supportive of the change. Right. I think they always knew that I, that it was, that that wasn't really uh, right for me. Mm -hmm. um, they just wanted me to finish for the security of it. You know, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. but they are very very proud and kind That's of crazy. you know they're interested in in what I do and mm. uh, my films and they always want to watch them and when I'm on stage they always come and see it you know uh they're they're they're, they're very supportive that's great what uh I know you you studied in London in, in England um what made you decide to stay there and not like take the next step to like maybe move to LA to continue yeah on? well um I did go to LA um, and have spent over the years a few months okay. at a time uh, doing and I've done films over the years that have been American yeah. um, and and the series actually that was a BBC HBO co-production called House of Saddam um, but I guess I never took the big leap to, to move there hmm. I mean one of the main reasons is that my husband is English and he's okay. here He's a playwright and a director called James Phillips. And he, uh, so, you know, my base is here. So moving over to LA is a bit complicated for me, family wise. Um, but I don't, I don't exclude the possibility of moving there in the future. Right. I would actually ideally like to move there for a job as opposed to moving there to search for job for a job. Because nowadays, with self, with with this whole online revolution and COVID, and COVID making things even more, um, you know, uh, online, all auditions, all the auditions happen. You you film yourself and you send it. I might as well be living in Timbuktu. It doesn't really matter. Right. You know, I send myself tape if I get the job and if I'm allowed to travel and if I have the right papers for whatever country it is, you know, et cetera, then I go. So it, it's it, at the end of the day, you want to live where you're happiest living That's because right. it doesn't hinder your career not to be in L.A. like it was back 20 years ago or whatever. It, things are very, very different. You mentioned self tape. Uh what do you like better? Do you like to audition in front of people or do you like to self-tape because you can do a few tries before you decide what to send? Yeah, pros and cons. Um, at the beginning of the self-tape revolution, I found it really stressful because suddenly us actors, you know, usually we just have to learn our lines and perform, but suddenly we had to fix the lights, fix the microphone, uh, fix the camera, uh, look in the right direction all of these things that are not really our jobs so it was yeah. very very stressful um, but having got the hang of it there are advantages because as you say you can just film yourself uh, as many times as you want and then and then send the one that you're most comfortable with whereas if you go into a casting office you know you've got nerves you've got like 10 minutes max to That's maybe right. a couple a couple of attempts or something so you don't really you know, you can't warm into the thing, the, the part. However, 
the the advantage and the um, the excitement and the adrenaline of going into that room and meeting the people live it is irreplaceable you know because meeting someone is 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 so important uh you know you get the vibe of the other person <clears throat> they get yeah, they get your vibe yeah. and you can't it's it's really important in our job because suddenly, you, you know you 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 hear stories of people walking into rooms and the other people know immediately that you're the one who's going to play the part because they see you in person it's it's harder to do that in uh, through self tapes how do you prepare yourself for like a, a live audition like you said you only have like 10 minutes like is there something you think about to make you feel comfortable you know like like i've had other guests where like you know what in the morning i go for a run and, and then i get ready and it makes me feel better you know like what's your thing like how do you what do you do well first of all you you prepare as well as you can for the actual part yeah. uh you know your lines and you make some decisions to do with the character or the the, the piece that you're given um so that's the main thing i do um but to 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 alleviate the stress yeah exercise helps um a run or a cycle um uh, a, med a yoga and meditation you know anything that will quieten the the monkey brain yeah. so that you go in there and you don't you don't you know the, the your brain isn't going into overdrive and you can just focus on the task at hand and just do the best you can in the in the performance and enjoy it yeah. trying to enjoy it i think is important have you ever have you ever had like an audition when you don't think it went well and then you leave and you're like oh i should have done it this way or i should have done it a different way oh yeah yeah all the time, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do that you know i mean i do it yeah. but I, I i'm perfectly aware that it's just not something that you can control and you yeah. you you can't control it you just you 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 walk ideally you walk out of the audition room or you send off the self-tape and you forget about it yeah. because it's done and and it's it's up to the gods now you either right. you know the one thing that past guests have told me about the self tape is like sometimes their audition could get buried and they've already kind of made a decision because they've seen somebody and they don't even get a chance to even watch the next person. Do you feel yeah, like that? I don't know. I don't know what happens uh, in those rooms. All you can do is, and these are, these are things that you can't control and mm. an actress can't control what, yeah. what I can, I, I, I try to focus on the things that I can control. Yeah. Um, prepare as much as I can under the time frame that I've got, yeah. you know, on the, on the scene or the material that I've been sent and uh, do the best that I can um, under the circumstances, enjoy it and then send it yeah. off and forget about it. And it's up to the gods. And really, I do believe that, you know, if it's, if you're meant to play that part, you will play it. I really believe that. Yeah. A so I, I try play. not to, I try not to focus on, well, anything yeah. like that any considerations like that yeah who do you look up to like in the in the acting world is there somebody that you try to like model yourself after like kind of like a study like i'm gonna go watch this movie or this person just to get an idea um no how to make I yourself don't, better I, well listen i i there's a lot of actresses that i admire um like for example i'm a huge fan of juliette binoche if you know the 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 french actress um uh she was in loads of films the english patient um chocolat these are the english language films but yeah. also she's been in a lot of french uh language films yeah. um there's something really really um heart uh, her heart is very very open mm. in her roles i find and she's um there's something really open about her and um honest and truthful and i admire that tremendously and of course meryl streep i think is brilliant oh, yeah. Yeah, um yeah, and laura laura linney i think is fantastic um so these actresses you know i i, I aspire to to one day uh, be as good as them and one day work with them maybe or mm. you know um but i don't study performances in order to imitate them no uh no never and i don't think that's a good idea because at the end of the day you 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 want to give Be yourself. you want to you want to bring bring the, the the your your truthful self which is going to be different from everyone else so let's talk about um first swim how did 
So you wrote that too, right? Or Cole wrote no, it? No, no, okay. no, no. I, I thought that's I what I saw on IMDb. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, a lovely writer-director called Alexandros Kostopoulos uh, wrote and directed that that um, uh, film. Uh, we, uh, as I said, we filmed it in Anavisos uh, last uh, September on a beach, uh, on a very, very hot beach uh, in uh, just outside Athens. Um, it was a lovely experience because, I mean, the, the script was great and the, the, the team was great. Uh, but also it was such a um, wonderful thing to, in the middle of the pandemic, it was September 2020, to suddenly be in a, in a filming situation on a beach in Greece, you know, after months and months of being stuck in a house uh, yeah. in London. It was just, I felt so, you know, happy. I just couldn't quite believe that I was, I was there. Um, and it was the story of a family uh, father, mother, and daughter um, on the last day of their holiday. And uh, they are dealing with some conflicts amongst themselves. Um, there's a, it's, it's a tense, it's a tense day yeah. between the three of them. Um, and I, I don't want to ruin it because I'm sure some of your viewers will want to see it. Uh, but it is um, the first swim of, of the little girl, Margarita, uh, who is our daughter. Um, and that's the premise of the film. And as I said, it's premiering uh, at the Athens International Film Festival. Uh, it's, I'm not sure the date, but it's between the 22nd of September and the 5th of October, I believe. Are you going to be there? Are you going to go to this? Yes, yes, I will, I will go. I so will that's go. Like a big, huge festival. Now, right? It's a big festival, yeah, and it uh, caters for short and feature films. And uh, uh, the wonderful actor, um, uh, bo both actors were wonderful. Margarita, little Margarita, played Margarita, uh, and uh, uh, the actor Petros Lagoutis, who's a very well-known actor in Greece, uh, played uh, plays my husband. So after it gets released uh, in the film festival, how can like the listeners and the viewers, if they want to look for it, how can they find it online? Um, that's a really good question. I'm not quite sure yet. It's very early days. I okay. think what happens with films is they they go on a festival run. So for example, they might uh, it might go and present at various film festivals okay. around Europe or even America. Then it might pop. Pop its uh, pop its head at uh, American Greek film festivals like oh, wow. New York Greek Film Festival, yeah. San Francisco, LA, um, and in the end, it will be somewhere um, on the streaming services. I'm not quite sure where it will, you know, eventually mm -hmm. end up at one of those. But you know, I, I I will I will try on my various social medias to to let everyone know where. Uh, where it will be shown okay. yeah before we went on the air we talked about how you filmed a couple other projects in greece like you know it in smirma and i i mentioned to you how like greece is turning into the hollywood of europe greece is doing so well i'm touching wood as i say this because i'm very very happy that this is happening and i hope it yeah. continues uh, it's doing incredibly well. It's, I mean, as you know, it's it's the most beautiful country and the most varied country. So there's there's everything you can want is there. Um, so it can cater to all sorts of different types of films. And um, this these last few months, spring and summer twenty one, uh, an enormous amount of films uh, were filming there, both Greek and international. Um, for example, the new Cronenberg film, Crimes of the Future, was filming there, and the new Knives Out was filming there. Um, a Disney feature about Ande de Kumbo was filming there. Jack Ryan was filming there. And a few things I hear are in the pipeline. So uh, a, a film called The Lost Daughter that uh, Mikey Gillenhall uh, directed uh, was filmed a few months ago. I think it's coming out now. I saw that it's about to be released. Um, uh, starring uh, starring Olivia Coleman um, was also being filmed in in Greece. So it's 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 booming. It's, great. it's really great. Very very exciting. Um, and as for me, I was I was there. 
um, from April uh, till uh, August uh, to do two films, two very, very different films. Um, the first one was called Minore, uh, and it's, uh, it's a film directed by uh, a very talented uh, director and visual effects specialist called Costandinos Kutsulotas. Now, Costadinos is a Greek, but he has lived all over the world. He was, I met him in London when he was living here oh, wow. a, few, a few years ago, and he lived in Toronto, he's lived in America, and he's married to a very, very talented American filmmaker called Elizabeth Shook, who uh, is also a storyboard artist. So these two, these two people are incredibly talented, not just as filmmakers, but as visual effects um, post-production uh, specialists. Yeah. Uh, and this is relevant because this film that we shot is uh, a genre film. It is, uh, it involves uh, um, otherworldly monst sea monsters that engulf the city of Athens um, and causes chaos. So it's kind of like a Um, in that uh, these these strange uh, sea monsters engulf the world, and how and how will the um, wow. uh, this band of misfits, which was you know the the main the, the the main characters in the movie, how they deal with this um, apocalyptic um, event uh, that that turns their life around. So it sounds like um, there'd be a lot of special effects in it too. So, so, so yes. So uh, apparently this film will take a long time to be released because it needs at least a year in post-production uh, for all the, all the special effects to be added. So even though it was filmed first, I reckon it'll be out um, middle to end of 2022. But I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. It was a wonderful experience. It was a, a, a brilliant team of young people. Um, it was um, in English and in Greek. Uh, so I played a girl who spoke in Greek and English because um, uh, 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 one of the main characters is uh, a, a foreigner who comes to Athens looking for his dad. He's actually half Greek. Um, and he meets me alongside the other characters. So we speak to him in English, um, but to everyone else, we speak in Greek. So it's an Anglo-Greek um, feature. Those are the best movies. Huh? So those are the best movies. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, so yeah, so it was it was great. It was great. These guys are people to watch for sure. Costadinos and Elizabeth. Yeah. And what about uh, Smirma? What was that about? So and then uh, and then Smyrna is uh, a film about uh, the Asia Minor catastrophe and the city of Smyrna. So um, in 1922, uh, uh, Smyrna and Asia Minor in general. Um, uh, well, the city of Smyrna, following many months of war and um, various bad political and other decisions, ended up uh, in flames and um, uh, all the Greeks and Christians in Smyrna had to leave because uh, the, the Turkish army came and there was a massacre um, combined with uh, a terrible fire uh, in the city of Smyrna. It's a very, very famous and extremely painful time in the history of Greece. Um, when in September 1922, um, thousands and thousands of um, Greeks, Asia, uh, Greek, Greeks from Asia Minor had to leave um, their, their, their cities and their homes and uh, become refugees. And uh, most of them ended up in Greece, the ones that survived, of course. So it's a, it's a very, very big, uh, big and very painful chapter in Greek history. So this film that I did, which is called Smyrna, My Beloved, um, is it, it follows um, a Greek family from Smyrna during this time, a little bit before the catastrophe and a little bit after. And it's uh, it's a, a beaut it was a beautiful film and also 
you know, it was a big honor to, to take part in such a, uh, you know, big historical period film about, you know, uh, sort of, um, you know, about this, this time. Yeah. Uh, and um, it was a, a, a big movie. So quite a big budget for Greek standards. So we shot in absolutely beautiful locations. Um, the, the costumes, the period costumes were absolutely exquisite. Uh, and uh, again, personally, I spoke both in English and Greek because I, ha I happened to play the Greek wife of the American consul of Smyrna at the time. Wow. Um, so I spoke, I, ha I haven't speak and spoke both languages as well. But in fact, Smyrna was very multicultural at the time. There were a lot of languages spoken there because uh, there were a lot of Europeans, a lot of Americans who lived there properly, you know, they, they were settled there. Yeah. Uh, so it was a very, very multicultural city and very vibrant city. So it's um, it's going to be a big one, this, this because, um, because uh, all Greeks around the world, I think, um, either have roots from Asia Minor or they, you know, they, they consider this a very important story and they, you know, and, and uh, I think for, for, for Greeks worldwide, this is something that they would want to see. Yeah. Um, and it was a beautifully shot movie with great actors as well and a uh, great script. Um, uh, the writer and star of the film is a lady called Mimi Denisi, uh, who's this talented powerhouse of a of a lady who managed to um, get this whole thing together. In fact, um, the film is based on a play uh, that she herself had written oh, wow. and starred in for many years in Athens. So there was so it, originally it was a play, a theat theatrical play, mm -hmm. and uh, it was hugely successful. Um, the whole of Greece went to see it, and eventually she managed um, to turn it into a film script and get the backing and make it happen as a film. So she's she's really achieved a wondrous thing uh, in turning this into a film, especially during this very difficult time of the pandemic. Yeah. So I'm I'm very excited uh, to, and this one it. allegedly I hope will be out in December 2021. And, and you know how it is with like the Greek culture and everything. Like if we, for most Greek people, if they see something that has to do with history, they're going to tune in. They're going to go and watch it somehow. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, this one is a special one. I'm really proud of it, and I'm really excited to to see it. So, uh, so what's next for you now? I know you're going to Greece in a few weeks for the festival. I, I'm going to Greece in a few weeks for but the festival. Any other projects? That you're um, gonna start filming. There's there's one us? there's one, but I can't. Sadly, I can't. Um, okay. I can't speak about it yet. Okay. Um, but I I I'm very excited to do so once once I'm allowed. But uh, there's a very exciting thing in the in the pipeline here That's in great. London. That's great. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daffy, uh, last, uh, how can the listeners and the viewers find you on social media? Oh, um, I am, I think at, God, I can't remember my handles. I mean, it's, <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm at Alex Daphne on Twitter and I'm at Daphne Alexander on Instagram, I think. Uh, and Daphne Alexander on Facebook. Um, yeah, Daphne Alexander. Daphne Alexander on Facebook and Instagram. That's, uh, that's fantastic. And please find me. Please find me. <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what do you want to tell the, the Kipriots fans and the Greek fans? Is there anything you want to tell them? I love you. I love Cyprus. I'm I'm there a lot. Uh, I'm very connected to my, you know, to my roots. I um I feel like whenever I'm in Cyprus, I I kind of get my strength back and I recharge um and um you know uh and in fact you know films that have to do with cyprus for some reason i've i've particularly i don't know it's they've sort of touched me deeply 
you know, because because where you're from does does actually make a difference. However much you travel and however much you uh, live in other countries, it does. You know, at the end of the day, you are you know connected to to where you're from. I think as as a as an artist, as an actress. So so yeah. Daphne, this was great. Thank you for coming on the show. Lovely, Elias. Lovely to meet you. Thank you for the you chat. Too.